Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Steel City Knives where I'm doing one of my favourite videos today. We're going to be having a look at Ian's collection. So, I'm really enjoying this series. We started with Roland and Roland just gave us a snippet of his collection. But the picture that he sent me is burnt into my memory, <laughs> honestly. I have the worst memory but I dream of this. I It was just, I was in awe of this. And, and how we started this... So that's a, like a small snippet of Roland's collection. He's got some phenomenal knives. He sent me a few more after that that I really wanted to do, like a follow-up. But w we just took a snippet of Roland's collection. Same with Drew. We didn't go through his entirety. We just went through uh, a handful. But the way Roland, uh, Roland, the way Ian has set his collection out uh, in this or like really organised manner. Uh, it's quite easy just to have a look at a whole drawer. So we're going to try and do two drawers today. And what I'm going to do, hopefully I can revisit some of the other guys' collection and we can have a bit of a recap down the line, see where they are with their collection and things like that. I know I'd like to show some more Rolands. We've got somebody waiting in the wings that wants to be a part of it as well. Um, and what we're going to do, I think once we've sort of... I, I get to know these guys and it's really a, a good way of, of, and it's brilliant. I've really been enjoying that side of it. So um, get involved. Um, it, it's not going to be a back-to-back -back video. I don't like doing that. Same with my Sheffield trip. I don't like to, even though I've bombarded you with the shorts, but the shorts were easy to do and they're just easy to lob out there. But I like to just mix things up, give you a bit of variety. Plus, for me, it's like when I take a fancy to do a video, I'll do it and then just uh, whack it out. So, all right. Um, right, let's crack on. Right, we'll have a look at the case knives. There's a book 112 up there by the looks of it, but um, we all know what a book 112 is, and you know, there's a lot of videos out on YouTube already. So we'll have a look at his case collection. So he's got a trapper in green bone. He's got, I love the, I, I can see there he's got some antique bone covered ones. Now I've got that in the medium stock, and I really do love the antique bone. He's got a tribal lock and a barlow in that. So that is absolutely stunning. Um, and then we've got a medium stockman in the blue bone. He's got a small copper lock. Is it small copper lock? I don't really know the copper locks that well because obviously not UK legal, so I've never picked one up. He's got a swell centered jack and the yellow curly oak. Now I think this is quite a recent-ish release and I love it. I've not got case, do do wood covers, but not as much as say their bone or their delrin and things like that. But yeah, I just really love this cover this curly oak i've seen it a few times now and i think i'm gonna have to pick something up in it because it does look good especially with that shield and then he's got a copper head and a peanut so look at that it's a brilliant case is one of those uh, knives i feel like you could have like a sub collection quite easily and, and really f you know fall down that rabbit hole with with a case um uh, yeah i could see myself getting a special wallet just for my case knives but i'm trying to be disciplined but i've got a, i've got a few but yeah that's a brilliant collection there ian right let's have a look some more right he's got a couple of remington bullet knives here now i've got a real soft spot for remington bu bullet knives i want to have like a little mini collection of them um, I've got a few myself. I've done one video on the channel, and that's of a bush pilot. It's not a brilliant video. It's very early on. I think I get the pattern wrong. I call it a muskrat instead of a moose or something. But they're a brilliant um, sort of knife to collect with a lot of history, uh, a lot of twists and turns to the history as well. It's just really interesting. And even the artwork that sometimes comes with some of the knives has... Uh, a backstory and everything else really a uh, brilliant so the ones he's got here he's got an r1253 from the 1992 so uh, initially when remington first made these knives they made 11 patterns and they made this sort of trapper with like a bow trapper i think they used to call it the hunter uh, but yeah he's got one of them so it's very similar to that although i believe the originals weren't locking but he's got the locking version of that both in Del Ring covers, and then he's got the Woodsman, which is the R4353, which was not in 1985. Um, I just love them. I love them. And if, if you're interested in them or just getting started in them, there's three channels I would say to go check out. Hobie on YouTube does some brilliant, absolutely brilliant uh, videos on them. He actually does one on the so i'm a bit of a knife geek as we all know a lot of people draw over knives on videos i draw all over 
books that people have. And there's a book called Remington Past and Present Knives. So Remington Knives Past and Present, something like that. And it it's so expensive now. I should have bought it years ago. But uh, Hobie does a whole video on that. He talks about the artwork on it. He's got so, so much good uh, content out there. I really wish I had that book. It's going for like silly money over here now. About nearly £200 for the book. But it looks an amazing book. Right, two other channels. Uh, Ray over at North Star Knife Reviews. He's He's got uh, a collection of them. And he's done some brilliant uh, videos on the history and stuff. Uh, this one in particular I've watched a couple of times by Ray. Brilliant uh, content on his bullet knives. And then uh, Big J over at Big J's Knives. He loves... Uh, bullet knives he's got a collection he does a lot of shorts and does videos on them so there's three channels if you're into remington bullet knives uh i've just bought a little um I'll, ch I'll i'll do a video on it soon but it's like a stag covered one and it comes with some of the artwork and i specifically <laughs> kind of wanted it for the artwork <laughs> that's how much but the stag is beautiful on it anyway i will do a video on it eventually and i'll link my rubbish one at the end of this but yeah brilliant knife to collect definitely Right, so we have a look at his uh, Uncle Henry and Old Timer collection. So, before we get started, he's got a Bruin here. Imagine the Bruin as just a slip joint because it's a perfect shape, perfect shape blade. Everybody loves it. It's a brilliant knife. Imagine that as a slip joint. Can we have that? That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? That would be brilliant. Please tell me I'm not on my own there. I think a lot of companies now, they could do slip joint versions of stuff that would really and a lot of people have said it i think they said it about the five five the book five five and wouldn't that be good honestly would really so i think as slip joints are getting more popular hopefully more companies will start doing things like that right so can you tell a bit of a test here can you tell me which ones are the american made and which ones are the chinese made um and then i won't say anything and put it in the comments uh but yeah so I'm trying to, um, he's got a lot of knives to get through. I'm trying to rattle through them, but I'm loving the collection here. Right, on to his otter draw. Right, if we go through the ones that are just on their own there. So we've got a Camillus Electrician's knife. Um, a brilliant knife to have. I've got one of these, not in good, not as, that looks in really good condition. So um, always a good one to have in the collection, an electrician's knife and uh just an interesting knife, definitely. And then he's got a CK knife in Delrin. Um, I'll link my video. I did a designated video to CK knives, and I'll link it at the uh, back at, at, at the end of this. And then uh, he's got one. He's got a Mercury knife. So they're based in Maniago in Italy. Um, the company's been going for about sixty years. They're a really good company. I've got a few of their. Um, I've got a few of their knives. I've got one of the Victorinox uh, style sportsman knives in Olivewood. Uh, but they're quite affordable, obviously made in Italy. Uh, they refer to their sort of Victorinox sort of sportsman's knives as seven uses, five uses. But they do it in stag and olive wood, I think, is the couple of covers that they do it on. Um, but yeah, the olive wood is very affordable and quite readily available over in the UK. And then he's got an open L. Look at this open L. It's uh, number eight. I love the open L. I take a bit of flat for it. But it was, uh, if I'm honest, it's one of the first sort of knives that got me into the whole I can't believe how cheap it was for the amount of history that was involved how simple it was it, I just uh, I think they're a brilliant knife and everyone should have one in their collection especially for the money that they are really uh, it's just unfortunate how industrialized they've gone now and um, they still have a few hand operations but uh, yeah it's, it's like a different animal now the open L, but still a brilliant brand and uh, a brilliant knife to have in the collection for sure Right, on to the next draw. Right, we're going to have a look at his otter collection. Uh, I'm trying to rattle through them. No offence, Ian. Um, I'm just trying to keep it to a, a manageable size for the video. Uh, let's have a look. So I'm very, very jealous of his otter collection. He's got a brilliant otter collection. Um, I've, I've not long picked up a, a sod buster in the plum wood from Otter. I'll link the short to it. It don't look like that now, unfortunately. It's uh, patina it up now, but uh, I, I did a short when I first got it and posted it. Um, so he's got one. That, that, see this, and the, again, the, they their sod buster style knife. They're doing a lot of different wood covers. Otter's brilliant for this. They do do a lot of wood covers. 
uh, and a lot of different types. It's brilliant. It really is. And they do a lot of sizes as well. So they do cover for as UK guys and they do an English sort of UK legal, which usually they're small. They are a bit harder to get hold of, definitely. But, I mean, you can go directly to Otter or I'd still like buying knives in Europe and just get them delivered here. But, yeah, and then he's got a Rosewood. Now, this Rosewood is the UK legal one. It's slightly different, so it's not got that sort of teardrop boys pattern handle. It's, it's sort of swelled out slightly. The only problem with this is the price. They want a great deal. Considering it's only Rosewood, they do want a lot of money for this. I'll try and find the link to the money and all the rest of it. Uh, and then he's got this Levin. This is one I definitely want for the collection. I'm surprised I haven't picked it up yet. They do this in a small and a large. Birchwood handles, two bolsters. Bloody gorgeous. Look at it. Uh, I've got that stag, and I'll do a video on that one, hopefully one day. And then he's got the UK legal brass version of the K55K, essentially. So it's a UK legal. It's not got a lock in that. Uh, part of it. He has got the K55K there in the green. Just a quick one, Ian. Is that a Ray Mears SFO? I can remember seeing this a few years back on Ray Mears official website. And I don't know if he had that one specially made for his site, but I, um, it's a very historic black cat, very historic knife. Brilliant one to have in the collection. And then he's got this, it's essentially the version of that, but without the K55K black cat on it, on the one on the side there. Uh, then he's got the Oak Classic. Go on, Ian. What do you make of it, mate? Did I, uh, was that maybe, did you watch my video? You got me to blame. What do you think, mate? I love mine. I think it's an absolutely stunning knife. And then he's got two, not just one, but two, three rivet knives. Anyway, he's got another one. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. But, yeah, he's got two, three rivet knives. Now, this is everybody really rates this. I've not got one person in the collection because they're not UK legal, but the, I love the bolsters. I love the free rivets. I think I'm definitely going to have to pick one up. But yeah, as you can see here, Ian's got two in different uh, cover materials. Everyone speaks, everybody I know that's got them speaks very, very highly of them. It's just not UK legal. Right, and then should we go, we'll go to that large white bone. So I've got the small one and it's UK legal, but I've not got that bolster. I wish I could have had that bolster. The bolsters look phenomenal, really do look good. But yeah, he's got the large white bowl, uh, white bone one. And then this was my grail knife for a very long time. And it probably, I still need to get one. They're not UK legal, but it's that beautiful. You probably wouldn't end up using it anyway. It's the beekeeper's knife. And uh, it comes in so many different woods. They do like a pear wood in it. It's just that it's just absolutely stunning. I can remember when it first came out, all the videos on YouTube. I was dying to get it. It's just a shame they didn't the, the size of it really. But there's one thing I've got a bit of a bugbear with Otter. I love Otter as a company. I love their knives. I love. I even love their packaging. They come in a really small, understated box. They usually give you some freebies. You usually get a cleaning cloth or some oils. There's been a few cases where I've not had nothing, but. Um, they are a brilliant company, really enjoy, you know, really traditional, really well made, but they do a lot of etching and they put the B on the shield there is an etch. It always look quite faint on all the videos I ever seen. I just imagine that going eventually. Same with the, the Otter logo on the knife itself. Once that, because they do a lot of carbon steel, once it gets patina and you clean it and all the rest of it. It's going to go. And then usually what they have on their tang stamp is Zoligen and then just Germany. No Otter, no nothing, just Zoligen, Germany. So all that etching, I'm not a massive fan of etching anyway. And it does go. If you use it, if, if it's not going to be like a collector's piece and you use it, it just goes, unfortunately. So stamps all the way, if you ask me. And then it's got the Anchor Messer. Now, this is a phenomenal knife. And they come in so many different materials. They have a brass inlay for the for the anchor. Um, they have a small and a large. And then again, they have a lot of different wood covers in the anchor mess. But a brilliant knife. Right. So I said to Ian, um, uh, I want a way of seeing which ones your favourites are. So he came up with the idea of like putting some horizontal in the drawer to show which ones were his favourite. So he's got three, what we got? F yeah, no, sorry, four down here. So he's got a lower Mesa, and that's in a free rivet style. Lower Mesa, for some reason, seems to be associated with fishing. If you ever go on any of the German sites, if you go onto fishing German sites, you'll find lower Mesa usually. I don't know what that's all about, but I've got one knife, and it's in a spear point, um, and it's a bit of a, 
but yeah, I keep meaning to do a, a video on them. But yeah, cool company anyway, and they do seem to be doing some good knives. And then a hot cough knife, stunning, absolutely stunning. Bit of an underrated, don't get enough publicity as far as I'm concerned. Joe from Mess HQ got me into him. I think Knife Raven's got one, he said the same thing. I know Ian's a big fan of Joe uh, over in Mess HQ, but hot cough, bit harder to find over here. But if you go over to Europe, you'll find loads of different uh, sort of shops that will sell hot cough and they do some phenomenal uh, pieces and they really do. Uh, they, they do a lot of really nice horn actually and stuff like that covers, but really, really a decent brand, really high quality. And then he's got this Robert Class coat bottle. Um, they're still making this. Uh, they do it in a small and a large, I believe. Um, I love Robert Class. I'm trying to get a few more in the collection. I'm struggling to get them made though, to get them over here. It seems to be taking a long while, but I'm looking forward to showing you my next one. Uh, that's being made as we speak, I think. But yeah, really good brand. I really like Robert Class. And then this is an interesting one. And again, this was inspired by Joe, I think. So Ian was out in Germany, uh, and then Joe had visited this Niesel and put it on Instagram. And I think Ian Wells wasn't too far uh, from that place. So he swung by, checked out the shop and picked this up. Personally, I've been trying to track one down. I think you have to buy it directly from their shop. If you need to research a bit about the company, Boca on their official site have got this article that's really good. Uh, but yeah, they've been going for a while. Boca, if Boca really rates them and did this uh, bit of a... Uh, story on them then you know they're good and like I say Joe's been there and he really rates them Joe did an impromptu sort of live not that long ago and a few of us rocked up to it I was trying to get him to show it so I could have a closer look and just check it out but unfortunately it was in a room where his uh, baby was sleeping bless him so he couldn't go and get it but looks a decent knife I, I'm interested to see those like um, proud pivots on it um, pins on it but yeah it looks really cool and i've been onto their official site unfortunately i couldn't translate it to english but um definitely one to check out right i rattled through that in but uh thank you so much mate i'm really enjoying your collection and i hope you guys too are, are as well uh thank you for everybody that's got involved in this series and we'll have some more so usually i'll put a video out we'll We'll give it a while and then I'll put another one out. But yeah, I'm loving this collection like I am all the others. But right, see you on the next one. Cheers.